And welcome to Missoula. It's Big Sky Media Days here with Grizzly Basketball, Lady Grizz Basketball. A lot of special guests to introduce. We'll go to my left to right, senior Maddie Schoening, the, the lone senior for the Lady Grizz. Head coach Mike Petrino in his first year. Travis DeCure, what is this now? You're seven. Yeah, okay, you're seven for him. And senior Michael Stedman, a transfer from San Jose State who sat out last year and getting ready to go. A lot of excitement around the board for both teams. I know this is an unprecedented year. That would be an understatement. So, Coach DeCure, uh, you've got the most seniority here, so I'll let you lead off. What have the last seven months been like for you? So many challenges, communicating with your team. I know it's probably an impossible question, but sum up kind of what the last seven months have been to get to this point with the season on the horizon. Chaos. Uh, versatility, flexibility, patience have all been challenged. Um, but the good thing about our group is we're close-knit. Um, we operate as a family. We operate as one, and we've just found ways to get through the adversity. Mike, I couldn't imagine being a coach during this, but having it be the circumstances that you have walked into with it being your first year as well, how have you prioritized things with taking over a program and then getting everybody on the same page? A lot of newcomers, just so much has been thrown your way. Kind of the same question for you. How would you best maybe sum up the last six or seven months? Well, I think the, the new model that we've kind of created ourselves is plan, prepare, and pivot because wherever you plan out, uh, be prepared, it's going to be changed, and then sometimes you got to totally pivot new direction. Uh, but again, I go back echo what Travis said. If you have a group that's communicating together, working together, uh, we're all in this together, and and work through every situation possible. I'll go with Mike Stedman now. We've got Mike and Mike here. I, I like that theme. Travis was saying that beforehand. But Mike, I, last year you sit out and. I couldn't imagine what that would be like in the prime of your career, of course, but what did you learn most, maybe about your game or just being able to have a different perspective and watch this Grizzly team last year on their way to 18 wins? Um, I think the biggest thing I learned was I had to get in shape. Um, the first few workouts was pretty tough, and I realized the way how he likes to play and how I want to eventually get to, I had to be in shape. So me dropping 35 pounds was a big key in that. Um, I actually just took a before and after picture with Brandon, so you might see that on social media later. And um, also getting the balls at the right spot so I could raise my field goal percentage. That was also, those were probably the two biggest things when I came over here and sat down with Travis. 6'10", senior, third school now, and hoping to put an exclamation point on his career here at Montana. Maddie, you're the only senior on this year's roster. What does that mean for you from a leadership standpoint and just the day-to-day? -day? I know that you've stepped up from the, the very moment that uh, this has been pushed forward. So what, what is the role like now for you as the lone senior on the team? Uh, it's a pretty special and unique role. I had Jace Henderson a couple years ago was our lone senior, so I have a pretty good role model in front of me. and. Um, I kind of just look back and try to think of what she was doing as a lone senior, and she was just the most encouraging senior that she could possibly be, and uh, that's what I'm hoping to do with eight new kids on the team. I mean, you're constantly having to communicate uh, what Mike is saying, what we're saying, because we have all of our, um, I guess, kind of verbiage that we all use all the time, and so they're constantly asking questions, and they're so coachable, and they're so eager to learn, and so, uh, I mean, I've been super blessed with a team that's so awesome to be the lone senior with. Let's talk about the transition of roster, at least from last year to this year. And Travis, the obvious question to start would be replacing Saeed Pridget, who finished fourth on the all-time scoring list. Obviously, a leader for you, a four-year contributor. How, how has you transitioned your roster from maybe last year to this year? Um, the, the things that went through your mind about having to replace a Saeed Pridget? No, that, that's been a transition we've had to go through now, probably six consecutive seasons, really, for Martin Brunick, too. Saeed and and we've you know we've kind of fluctuated how we play how we score some things we do offensively and defensively that's what we brought Mike for um, was to produce some offense and, and give us a physical presence around the basket and make us a more versatile inside outside team but replacing fourth all time who played who had to share with fifth and sixth all time is fairly difficult uh, but I, I think we can score by committee, and, and I do think that Mike could pr produce a lot of offense for us this year. And Mike Petrino, same question for you as far as your four returners that had playing time from last year to this year. How much are you leaning on them in general? I know Maddie's at the top of the list with that, with her being the only senior, but uh, how much are you leaning on them, especially your first year taking over, just leaning on the uh, experience that you have on your roster? Well, yeah, we, we have to look at, I think the big thing, we have to focus on what we do have, not what has been gone or whatever, but what we do have is we have a very experienced uh, senior in Maddie Schoening who leads us in starting returning starting games. 
uh, that starts with her. It starts with the minutes that Abby got, Sophie got, uh, Kylie got. And then we got two kids that came off a really positive redshirt year that aren't mentioned uh, in Carmen Jordan, who, who, who definitely got better that year. So those are our most experienced kids. And then you bring the new kids in. And it's definitely create more competition. All right, player perspective here on how practice has been going because this is anything but ordinary, and I think both head coaches are, would be curious to hear your guys' responses. So how has practice gone? I, I know that it maybe changes from week to week as far as just with protocols, everything, ramping up the intensity. So, Mike, we'll start with you on give us a, a practice update because it's more interesting to listen to the players from this than the coaches anyway. Yeah, uh, practice has been very unpredictable. We'll go a week straight with just five days of practicing and then we'll get a text and saying oh we got to shut down because someone got the virus or something something going on so it's been very different um i had to get used to it but i think we're still able to get a good amount of work in i think we're ahead um and we got to stay ahead by keep working and grinding maddie same question for you as far as just the practice routine and you guys getting on the same page and ramping up the intensity how's it been going from your perspective yeah, uh, definitely different starting out by wearing the masks around our necks. We always got to pull up during uh, timeouts, and when we come into huddles, have to get a spray every time, so we're constantly um, just keeping our distance, doing our best we can there. But I think in our team has responded really well to it, though. We are still working hard every day. We've made huge improvements already, and uh, I've been in meetings around the conference that aren't even able to practice right now or haven't or are just lifting, and so I just constantly remind the girls that we're so lucky to be able to be out there as a team already. And so... Uh, that's it's not been terrible I think <laughs> it's a great it can start be. perspectives yeah. important when it yeah. comes to all of this I, I think uh, all fans out there are curious about the newcomers and the new additions to the roster so for both teams here travel start with you just the freshmen and the transfers you brought in instead of going down one by one for me I'll just leave the floor to you tell, tell me how they've um, integrated into your system and uh, maybe some standouts early on I think the guys have done a good job of showing up and competing uh, there's a lot of learning, right? You, you, you know, Maddie referred to terminology, which is paralyzing sometimes when people are using words that you don't understand what they mean. And, and so sometimes the learning process slows down your ability to compete. But I think this group has done a phenomenal job up to this point. Freshmen have showed up ready to compete. They know uh, we've got a lot of experience in front of them in terms of young talent. And so they're eager to get on the floor and they're competing and they're making practices very, very competitive. So. Um, from my standpoint, I've, I feel like we're headed in the right direction and I've got more bodies to, to make decisions through than I have in the past. And maybe that gives us a chance to, one, play through uh, any injuries or, or illnesses or whatnot that could take place, which this year is probably one of those years. Uh, but also, you know, you can hold guys a lot more accountable um, when you have someone that can go in and, and do things the way you want it done. Mike, a lot of newness on the Lady Grizz roster. I know that the fan base who you are so connected with, and they want to know these these new players. Uh, tell me about some of the new Lady Grizz additions. You went uh, a route where transfers came in, freshmen came in, a lot of excitement around who you brought in. So just tell me how, uh, how that has been and, and just bringing in new players to the roster. Well, a lot of these players were, yeah, they we had to fill some spots, obviously. So you know, one of the things we did is we acknowledged, again, that was where we're at. We have all these stats and I've shared with the players uh, this is what we have returning uh, percentage wise whether it's points rebounds three-point shooting whatever this is what's graduated or gone and uh, that opened up a lot of eyes for players I think they love it because they go wow look at where I can step in and contribute uh, for coaches it's a little more you know worried some maybe but uh, actually it's been great because we've been very transparent with that uh, our players have come in here and we try to have a lot of competition practice it's been a lot of fun to see that and they know there's plenty of opportunities there to add to the experience we do have back. Um, but, you know, I think the freshmen have done a really good job. I've been impressed with them coming in here. Uh, the three transfers have that college experience, whether it's in games or in practice, practicing against a really good opponent for two years. Um, so they've definitely brought in, and I think it's made our upperclassmen uh, that more exciting as well. Uh, but the competition is really fun. And, you know, Trav makes a good point. We, we are one test away from having our, was our roster altered. So we have to be ready. Everyone has to be ready to go. Uh, this is a year unprecedented, like we said, um, with all the changes going on. Everyone's got to be ready to compete. Everyone's got to be ready to produce uh, in that situation. Mike, for you, I guess the first question that pops to my mind is, why did you choose Montana? What stood out and what were your priorities as you wanted to uh, extend your career and obviously make the sacrifice to sit out a full year or two for this opportunity for this season? So uh, just take me through back to the decision-making of why you chose Montana. What was at the top of the list there? I told him he could play the point. <laughs> 
point guard. That, that's the secret that we're putting out there this year. Mike Stebbin at point guard. No, go ahead, Mike. Nah, um, I think the biggest thing was just the history they had and the success they had with the players they had at this, in this program. Um, they went to back-to-back tournaments, me entering into the portal. And I knew how I can contribute with the team. And I had a vision and with Coach Cobb. And he actually was like the only, when I put my name in the portal, he actually came down and flew to, to see me a week before I came out here. So it wow. showed how committed they were. So I think that was the biggest thing. Can't wait to see you on the floor. You as well, Maddie, because your career journey has been awesome to watch it and a lot of adversity that's been thrown in. I still remember the, the game here on this floor against the Cats. The, the game that you had there will go down in the history books. But just take me through your career journey and having to overcome adversity to get ready for your senior year and how you've used that maybe to drive you through all of the practices, the workouts, and everything to get to this point. Yeah, I can definitely say I'm feeling my age now and (laughs) going through all those injuries. But, uh, yeah, just starting my first years of starting every game and just going from that role to then having a city year, uh, I think it was pretty humbling just learning how to be their biggest cheerleader. And and it was just rewarding, I think, in the same way, too. Um, And then, obviously, I've had a couple of bangs up since then. But I think the adversity has just made me appreciate being able to play, being able to be out there, giving my all when I'm able to be healthy and be out there. And so I keep reminding the girls that too, that we're pretty lucky to be in the situation that we are, that we're a part of a division one program that competes at the level that we are. And so um, I think it's just given me a lot of the seniority knowledge of being like, we're pretty lucky to be here. Um, And then, yeah, it just makes me so excited to be chasing that big side conference championship that we've been chasing for years. And I think uh, this team has their mindset on that already. And so, yeah. Got to love that here at Montana. The expectation always high. Hanging banners here in Dahlberg Arena, the goal. Let's get to the nuts and bolts of the conference season. Preseason poll, not quite out yet. And and to get a scope of the rest of the league is probably pretty tough right now. So how do you do that as we sit here, you know, getting ready for the season in a couple of weeks? Travis, how would you maybe assess the rest of the big sky? Or is it more question marks going into it this year from your chair? Or is it more just let's focus on my team and we'll kind of figure out where the rest has it? the dominoes will fall we always focus on us right um like i said every year we break this down by the seasons and so preseason, non-conference then conference and so really i won't worry too much um for a short period of time on the, the one thing that's changed this year is we're actually going to open up the first week of december with some conference games so we've got one opponent southern utah that we need to make sure we're paying close attention to uh between now and december 3rd but then the rest of that will wait until january I, I think the biggest is you look back just traditionally, who's been good. Um, the state has made a move the last couple of years uh, since Coach Perry's been there. Uh, Weber's retooled with probably as much talent as they've had in, in five, six years. Um, Eastern, obviously, with returning the numbers that they're returning, are going to probably pick to win the league. And then Northern Colorado's found a way to play good basketball. Uh, you can't count out Montana State. But I, I tell you one thing, every year it seems like someone's picked sixth, seventh, or eighth, and they finish in the top four. And I think that that's a sign of how well our conference is coached. I think there's a lot of teams that play better, play above their actual talent, which makes this a very competitive conference. So we won't overlook anyone. Um, but but I think the teams that I named are the ones that are probably be picked in the top half, and then we figure it out from there. Mike, same type of question to you. You guys finished in the top four in the league last year, and I know that the Big Sky very competitive from the the standpoint of every game you got to bring your best. So have you gotten to the point where you're assessing maybe the rest of the league? How much have you talked with the rest of the league? Just everything that goes into maybe the rest of the Big Sky conference for this preview. Well, I think last year, two years ago, our league was really senior heavy. Uh, it was actually Jay's senior year. They graduated a lot of ex- uh, experience, a lot of talent. Last year was kind of a new new year. New year. I think the league overall will be better and deeper this year. Um, and then, you know, if you look at individual teams, uh, Idaho State returns a wealth of experience. Um, I think Northern Arizona will have their best team they've had in years. Uh, and I also think that uh, Idaho will be good. Uh, and then of course, you know, the defend, you know, Montana State will have another good de- group again. So it, it's, but again, I go back to what Travis said too. I, we're going to concentrate on us. I mean, uh, we, we're our focus. We're the people who we can influence and control every day. Um, and then that part will take care of itself. But I do think the league will be better than it was last year as far as deeper, more experienced. I love asking this question to players because it, it, the, 
best person that knows your games yourself, right? So give me a mini scouting report on Mike Stedman's game um, as far as the strengths, what you feel that you can bring to the team, Mike, and again, maybe the things that you're grinding on in practice to try and retool your skills that you have throughout the last year and even now as you ramp up for your first game. Okay. Um, some strengths, I would say a big that can use both hands around the basket, um, could shoot all the way out to the three-point line, um, could rebound pretty good. Um, something I need to work on is probably my lateral quickness. Um, yeah, I'll say that. Okay, I was just I was t checking out Travis's reaction too. If there was agreement or disagreement on that as well, Maddie, for you, I guess maybe a twofold question. Same question as far as how would you assess your game, and number two, what would you like to maybe improve on here for your senior year to hone in the skills a little bit? Yeah, um, I think the past couple of years I've been looked at as someone that can play down low, someone that can bring the ball up, and someone that can shoot. And so I've kind of been versatile in that way. I would like to see uh, more of a mid-game uh, for me, like pull-up jumpers, finding um, that mid-range shot. We've been doing a lot of mid-game shooting practice, and I have a pretty high percentage, and so I just want to be more confident in shooting those in games. Um, and then, again, with quickness, too, both on defense and offense, uh, I love running the floor, and Mike has implemented a lot of speed game uh, type play, which is something I love and so thankful for and so uh, just for me also getting that speed back um, and in I guess that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> See, fair assessment. I was looking at Mike the whole time there and he he was in agreement for his lone senior on the roster. The big question of scheduling and I know that it's very fluid at this point. We'll we talk won't to play anybody. <laughs> nobody. Just straight practice. Okay. All right. I figured that'd be the case. No. Tell me I, at least how the scheduling challenges have been, Travis, what you can maybe share with us that's a done deal, and also just your assessment on how the Big Sky schedule looks this year. Obviously, it's different with playing two games in a span of less than 48 hours at the same location against the same team. So all that scheduling into one question for you to kind of break it down for us. Uh, challenging, entertaining at the same time. Um, when you look at conference with the back-to-back -back opponent, I, I think I'm going to be intrigued to see who's – better at making changes, making adjustments on one day's preparation without overworking your guys and having enough energy to show up on a Saturday afternoon and perform. Um, there are some coaches, I think, that are really good at making adjustments, tricks up their sleeves, that might be in an advantage uh, that maybe didn't have advantages in the past. And, and so I, I, I could see some programs making some moves based on the way this schedule works out and we'll have some fun with it um, you know I think we are a team of adjustments halftime adjustments we've always made ch changes from game one to game two we're going to do it in a shorter period of time but I think that we're built to do that so I look forward to it uh, as far as non-conference it, it's tough you, you, one minute you're playing 20 minute games then you're down to 16 and we built a schedule April May June on 16 pandemic gets worse we get to a point where it's probably smarter for our conference to go back to 20 games I was in favor of that uh, I think pretty much every coach was safer cheaper travel just better to know you're going to get games it's later when maybe we, we we're in a better situation with the coronavirus at that point in time so now you've got to get rid of games because we're down to five or seven if you're an MTE so I've got two types of phone calls taking place I'm talking myself out of some games in renegotiation, pushing some games back to next year, but trying to get games at the same time. And when you only have five, and you're trying to play guarantee games the way we are, you've got this. You've got six, seven schools calling one for a game, and and so location is helping us with some, and it's made it very difficult with others. So right now we're just sitting on three high major games: two, two Pac-12 games, one SEC game. Uh, we're hopeful to get a contract in the next 24, 48 hours from another Pac-12 school. And then we'll see what happens with that fifth, whether that becomes a home game in December or another high major road game. Perfect. And Mike, same question for you as far as you can wrap up the schedule in a, a one-minute answer or anything in between with what you guys have going Well, just how challenging it's been. I mean, we talk about whatever schedule we planned out last spring, uh, prepared to play. Uh, we had to pivot with the conference going to 16, now back to 20, which was a good move because it gave us games. But it's been very challenging at this hour, and I say schedule used to be week to week or day to day. Now it's hour to hour. But at this hour, we're looking at having uh, three games on the road, all within bus uh, travel, which is helpful. 
uh, two home games. We'll have four home games in, de in December. So, But it's been very, very challenging, no question. Well, we cannot wait for Grizz basketball, Lady Grizz basketball, to take the court for Maddie Schoening, Mike Petrino, Travis DeCure, Michael Stebbin, Riley Corkin saying so long, and we will talk to you when the season starts here in a couple of weeks. Go Grizz.